Yes, us, que calos irsete to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. I cannot wait to share this beautiful dessert with you guys today. We're going to be making a caramel apple galette that is just beautiful to look at. It's so much easier to make than an apple pie, even though apple pie is one of my favorite desserts. This is so much easier to make because you don't have to make any crust for this. I'm using puff pastry, a flaky, buttery, delicious, and ready from the store, <laughs> which makes it even better. A caramel sauce that we're going to be making at home. I don't know about you guys, but caramel from the store is it's so hard for me to find a clean one that doesn't have a lot of stuff that I, don't, that I don't care to put in my body. So this one is going to be simple and delicious, and that's what we're going to begin with. We're going to begin by making the caramel sauce, which once you make it at home, it's really easy to make. So you just begin with two cups of granulated sugar. And I used to cook the sugar over the stovetop until it melts, like all traditional caramel recipes call for. And I've burned it so many times. Even though I'm careful, it just happens every now and then. I don't know why it happens. I step away or whatever, but it's happened to, the, to most of us. So I saw Ina Garden putting some water in with the sugar and that is a lifesaver. So now I add a third of a cup of water to the sugar and I cook it for about 10 to 15 minutes over the stove top. You don't want to whisk it at this point. You could go ahead and swirl the pot around several times. And speaking of the pot, you want to use a sauce pot that's deep, you know, even though you think that there's just a few ingredients in it. The thing is when you're cooking sugar, it, the steam that it releases once you add the other ingredients is it just rises so fast and it's so hot, you can get burned. So just use a deep pot, not too big, obviously. You don't want, you don't want the surface area to be too big. But anyway, we're gonna cook the sugar and the water until the sugar dissolves and it begins to get a beautiful color on it. Keep in mind that the deeper the color gets, the caramel is gonna start to get a little bit bitter. So you wanna get it a nice light caramel color. If you get it very dark amber, it's gonna have a little bit of a bitter taste to it. So keep that in mind. Do not step away from the pot. Swirl the sugar around until it's dissolved and once it gets that beautiful color, take it off of the heat and make sure that you have about six ounces of butter already diced up. You want everything ready to go because the sauce moves so quickly. I'm using salted Irish butter because I love the flavor and here in America, the salted butter is not too salty. If it's very salty overseas, use unsalted butter and then you could control the salt by adding a little pinch of salt in the end. But take the pot off of the heat and carefully add in the butter. Make sure you're wearing oven mitts in this step because the steam is going to burn. <laughs> so whisk that all up once you add the butter in off of the heat and then you can add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract and a cup of heavy whipping cream. Whisk it all up until it's smooth and then cook it for a few more minutes until everything comes together. And if you have any hard pieces of sugar in there that didn't melt, maybe they'll melt. If they don't, that's fine because once the sauce is ready, you're gonna take it off of the heat. And at this point, you could add some salt to it, a nice pinch of salt and caramel sauce just goes really well together. We've all had salted caramel ice cream or gelato and you know that that combination go is so good. But another good idea is to not pour the sauce directly into the container that it's gonna be stored in. Pass it through a little strainer. So if you have any bits of sugar that have crystallized or hardened, they won't be in the sauce. Now the sauce looks really thin, right? But as it sits and cools, it's gonna get thicker and it's gonna be the consistency of the caramel that we all know and love. This is great because you can make this sauce two weeks ahead of time. It keeps well in the refrigerator for weeks. It stores even better in the freezer for months. This just doesn't go bad. So you can do this step ahead of time. But if you're doing it the same day, do it in the morning because it's gonna take some time for the caramel to thicken. Anyway, we're gonna set that aside and now we're gonna put the galette together and this couldn't be easier. I love to buy my puff pastry sheets from the restaurant supply shop because they sell these really big ones. Each one is about 12 ounces or 340 grams. It's a rectangle, a 10 by 15 inch rectangle, which is perfect. But if all you can find is those packs that they sell at the supermarket that have two sheets that are smaller, two sheets of puff pastry, you can combine those and just roll them out into a bigger sheet. That will work too. I'm still gonna roll this out a little bit. I'm gonna lightly flour my work surface because it is sticking to my rolling pin. And I'm gonna roll this out so that way the center has about a 12 inch in diameter circle in the center. You don't have to roll this out into a circle because when you close the edges up to create the border, 
it's going to be a circle anyway. But go ahead and roll it out a little bit and then transfer the puff pastry to a baking tray that's lined with parchment paper. It's a good idea at this point to chill it in the freezer while you're preparing the apples. The recipe calls for four gala apples, the bigger ones, but I have these small ones here, so I'm going to use a little more. I'll use six today. You can use gala apples for this, pink lady apples, Granny Smith will be more tart, so you can use those if you like, but go ahead and peel the apples and then cut them in half and carefully take out the cores. I don't have an apple corer, so I'm just gonna use this little ice cream scoop. It does the job, and I'm just gonna get rid of any peel that's been left over in these corners. Then I'm gonna slice the apple into an eighth to a quarter of an inch thick slices, just like I have here. I'm gonna put all of the apples into a bowl, and then I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of light brown sugar. You can use dark brown sugar if you really like it. A tablespoon of cornstarch, which is gonna help thicken all of the juices that the apples are gonna release. And a heaping teaspoon of dried cinnamon to this. Toss the apples all together. I also squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on the apples so that way they don't turn brown even though the cinnamon is brown anyway, that's kind of silly. But the little hint of tanginess that the lemon leaves is nice too, so it's okay. Toss the apples all together and then arrange them however you want in the center of your puff pastry. And then go ahead and fold the edges over to create a beautiful rustic border. Pinch them together to seal them. Then I just rinse the bowl really quickly that the apples were in to make the egg wash in the same bowl so I have one less thing to wash. I just added an egg to the bowl with a couple tablespoons of milk and whisk that all up. And I'm just gonna brush the egg wash over the, the crust so that way it gets beautifully golden in the oven. I'm also gonna sprinkle a little bit of granulated sugar onto the crust and that's it. Now you wanna chill the pie a little bit longer so that way that puff pastry, when it hits the oven, you want it to be chilled so that way it stays nice and puffy. So put it in the freezer if you have room or in the refrigerator while your oven warms up. I'm going to preheat my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it's ready, the galette is going to cook on the center rack for about 45 minutes or until the, the crust is nice and golden and the apples are nice and tender. As soon as the galette comes out of the oven, I'm just going to take some of that delicious caramel you can put as much as you want of this on here, but it's a good idea to do this at this point when the galette is still warm. So drizzle some of the caramel sauce over the apple mixture and then let it sit for a little bit until it's at room temperature and it'll be ready to serve. The house will smell just absolutely incredible. You can serve this with some homemade whipped cream, with some ice cream, maybe some toasted nuts on top, pecans or walnuts. It's totally up to you, but I cannot wait to do the taste test. So I'm just gonna dig in right now. Mm. my goodness take this away from me <laughs> i can finish this whole thing guys desserts are definitely my weakness i hope you guys are going to love this one if you do let me know what you think in the comment section down below if you make it share pictures with me on instagram and on facebook if you want to print this recipe out it's on the website dimitrosdishes.com thank you so much for spending time with me today i'll see you all next time yes us